Hey yeah, man, you're back with some more unboxing unpacking, and this time we're going to finish the collector's boosters for the Lost Cowards of Ixlan, or Magic the Othering. So, we have three packs left of this collector's pack, so hopefully we end up on something strong, but mm, probably we won't, so. I mean, hopefully we, hopefully we get some something decent in general, but yeah, let's just start and see what we get been a quite a journey for this set so I saw I saw the set boosters for this as well as the previous set which I still need to open so there's a, there's a lot of magic guys so I also I also saw some Pokemon stuff to open too so a lot a lot of stuff in the future although not necessarily new but we'll go at it one week at a time right so all right first card. We got the Iron Paw Aspirant for one white. Whenever this enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. All right, we'll put that there. We got the Greedy Freebooter for black. When this dies, scry one and create a treasure token. Okay. Next up, we got a Basking Capybara for one green. Descend four. This gets plus three plus zero as long as there are four more permanent cards in the graveyard. All right. Next up, we got the Walk with Ancestors for four green. Return up to one target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Discover four. All right. Did we get some uncommons? No, there. Uh, I mentioned this before, but they're the the symbols between common and uncommon for this set seems to be pretty hard to tell, at least from first glance. So. This one is an uncommon. So we got an Enterprising Scallywag for a one red. At the beginning read ends up if you descended this turn, create a treasure token. Yeah, Alright. There. Next up we got I can't read that. It's Quint, firstborn of Gishoth for a red green. So haste, whenever this enters the battlefield, you may pay two. When you do, target dinosaur you control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature. Neat. That's also an adorable dinosaur, too. Alright, next up we got a Quadi Scavenger for a 2 green. A Raccoon. Descent 4. When this enters the battlefield, if there are 4 more permanents in your graveyard, you may return... Oh, not you may. You have to return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. Then we got a beautiful swamp. So I guess now we got the, the rares and stuff, so... First one, oh, this is uncommon. <laughs> we got a alternate art, Caparocti, Sunborn, two red, white. Whenever this attacks, you may tap two untapped artifacts and or creatures you control. If you do, discover three. All right. First rare, we got Brass Tunnel Grinder for two red. When this enters the battlefield, discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards plus one. At the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, put a boar counter on this. Then if there are three or more boar counters on it, remove those counters and transform it. And it transforms into Tek Tekutlan, this, I can't pronounce it, the Searing Rift. So it's a legendary land, tap to add red. When a reek has a permanent using mana produced by this, discover X, where X is the mana value. Seems good. Okay. So I don't know how broken discover can get, but... Yeah, there you go. Next up, we got the Growing Rights of Itlamok for two green. When this enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from it and put it to your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in, in, in any order. At the beginning of your end step, if you control four or more creatures, transform this. All right, and it transforms into the Cradle of the Sun. So tap to add green, and then tap to add green for each creature you control. Seems good. <laughs> I mean, the, the lands seem pretty good. The, the the transform lands. So next up, we got the Indomitable. Two blue blue trample. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. And as crew three, you may cast this from your graveyard as long as you control three or more tapped pirates and or vehicles. Though seems, I think, if I remember right, this whole set was like more focused on dinosaurs, so seeing the 
the pirates and our vehicle seems really interesting <laughs> as, as a choice so next up we got an alternate art breaches eager pillager for two red for strike whenever oh it's a pirate too so whenever a pirate you control attacks choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn so create a treasure token target creature can't block this turn or exile the top card of your library you may play it this turn all right next up is a command tower from the jurassic park set okay so just add one mana of any color in your command and your commander's color identity all right next up we got souls of the lost for one black as an additional cost to cast a spell discard a card or sacrifice a permanent so it says this power is equal to the number of permanent cards in your graveyard and its toughness is equal to that number plus one interesting interesting and then next up for our token we got a gnome token and then we have a merfolk token all right pretty cool stuff so we got a land for the Jurassic park i don't, I don't think we got too many creatures or any other things than land but my memory could be completely wrong so on to the second pack As you can see, the one side of the token is a dinosaur token. All right. First card, we got Caslim's Stone Tree for two green. When this enters the battlefield, look at the top six cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped. Oh, just any land card, not, not just a basic land. Then put the rest onto the bottom in a random order, and then craft with cave. Okay. So let's see what it transforms into. Caslam's Strider. So it's a 5-5 five, five Golem. Okay. Next up is Join the Dead. One black black. Target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. Descend four. That creature gets minus ten, minus ten until end of turn instead. If there are four or more printed cards in your graveyard. All right. Next up, we got an Acrobatic Leap for a white. Target creature gets plus one, plus three, and gains flying until end of turn. Untap it. Pretty basic. Next up, we got Sunfire Torch for a red. A equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has whenever this creature attacks, you may sacrifice this. When you do, this creature deals two damage to any target. And the equip is one. All right, time for the uncommons. We got Dreadmaw's Ire for a red. Until end of turn, target attacking creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, destroy a target artifact that player controls. Neat. Here we got a sinuous benthosaur for a five blue. Seems expensive. Whenever this enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library where X is the number of caves you control, plus the number of cave cards in your graveyard. Put two of those cards in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay, seems interesting. If you run caves, I guess. And then next up, that's a that's adorable in a sense. We got a mischievous pup for two white flash. When this enters the battlefield, return up to one other target permanent you control to its owner's hands. All right, we got a beautiful land card, the mountain, and we got alternate art of a quali, the seeding tower, one black green, descend four. As long as there are four more permanent cards in your graveyard, this gets plus two, plus two, and has trample. And then descend eight. As long as there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard, this gets an additional plus two, plus two, and can't be blocked by more than one creature. So plus four, plus four, and trample can't be blocked by more than one creature. That seems pretty good. All right. First rare for this pack, Warden of the Inner Sky for a white. As long as this has three or more counters on it, it has flying and vigilance. Tap three untapped artifacts and or creatures you control. Put a plus one plus one counter on this. Scry one, activate only as a sorcery. So I wonder, since the first the first bit says as long as it has three or more counters, can it be any counter? Or does it have to be a plus one plus one? Because it, it doesn't specify. But the, the second half specifies it's a plus one plus one counter. So, like, can I get a... I don't know, like a trample token or a trample counter on it, or is is there such a thing? Or is, I I know there's multiple types of counters. I just it doesn't. It's, some of it's not coming up to the top of my head for some reason. It's like there's like lore counters, 
somehow if you can transfer the planeswalker loyalty counters i don't i don't know but yeah it seems interesting with the wording well next up we got sentinel of the nameless sky for two green vigilance whenever this sit enters the battlefield or attacks create a map token okay the artwork seems pretty cool too all right next up is the sun furl imitator for two green so when this attacks, you may have it become a copy of another target dinosaur control, except its name is Sunfall Inf Imitator, and it has this ability. Did I say Infiltrator before I meant Imitator? So, interesting, it can copy everything except the name. So, alright, forward three, cool. Then next up, we got a Restless Reef Land. This enters battlefield tapped, add blue or black, two blue-black. Until end of turn, this becomes a 4-4 four, four blue and black shark with that touch. It's still land. When this attacks, target player mills four cards. Alright. And as I was saying, uh, we got another Jurassic Park plane, or Jurassic Park lands, and this is, is a plains. Next up, we got an alternate art of Anim Pakal Thousandth Moon. So a one red white. Whenever you attack with one or more non gnome creatures, put a plus one plus one counter on this. Then create X 1-1 one, one colorless no modified creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. Where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on this. Okay, seems interesting. And our other token is a dinosaur egg. Whereas the first one we saw was a dinosaur. Okay, dinosaur, dinosaur egg. Cool. The last pack for this box. Wonder what we're gonna get. Hopefully. Hopefully you so got some cool stuff. I mean, we've been, we've been getting some cool stuff too. I'm not saying the rest weren't cool, just hopefully we can end on something cool. So, first token is a dinosaur, a uh, red dinosaur. This one was a green dinosaur before. So, okay. First card is Wailing Pirate. We're getting a lot of pirates, <laughs> even though I said it was more focused on dinosaurs. In, in this video, it seems like we're getting a lot of pirates. So, anyways, we got a Wailing Pirate for. Three blue, when this enters the battlefield, if you control an artifact, tap target artifact or creature and opponent controls and put a stun counter on it. Okay. Next up, we got a river herald guy, two green, vigilance, when this enters the battlefield, it explores. Alright, next up, echo of dusk, to one black, descend four, as long as there are four or more permanent cards in graveyard, echo of dusk gets plus one plus one and has lifelink. Alright, next up is a land, hidden nursery. It is about to feel tapped, and then adds green, four green taps, sacrifice, discover four. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay. Next up is an uncommon. Yep, it's an uncommon. I had to double check. So, eaten by piranhas. What a way to go. One blue flash enchant creature. Enchant creature loses all abilities and is a black skeleton creature with base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Okay. Interesting. Next up, we got a helping hand for a white. Return target card or return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. All right. Next up, we got a visage 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 of dread for one black. When this enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals our hand. You choose an artifact or creature card from it. That player discards a card. Okay, and then craft with two creatures is five black. And it transforms into the Dread Ossasaur. I think that's how I pronounce it. It's a menace. When this enters the battlefield or attacks, you may mill two cards. Okay. That is creepy. <laughs> Alright. Then our beautiful land is an island for this pack. Then next up, we got a... Belligerent Yearling. Oh, that's adorable. Uh, one, one red. So trample. When this, this, whenever another dinosaur enters the battlefield under your control, you may have this base power become equal to that creature's power until end of turn, and it has trample too. So like, if you play the, like the twelve, twelve, oh, is it twelve, twelve or ten, ten dinosaur? You can have this become ten, ten, and then you can also have the, where is it? You can have this imitator. During the attack, you can copy that one as well. So that's that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. So yeah, all right. And this one's an uncommon too. Wow. 
And then for our first raid, we got a Sentinel of the Nameless City, which we've already got before. Which is, this one is the black border and then not the no bordered, so we're just gonna skip through that one. Next up, we got a Stalactite Stalker for a black menace. At the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on this. And then two black sacrifice target creature gets minus X minus X, where X is this power. Okay. Next up, we got a contest of claws. One green. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature. If excess damage was dealt this way, discover X, where X is that excess damage. Okay. Seems neat. Ooh, that artwork looks cool. We got a hulking raptor for two green green. War two. At the beginning of your uh, or at the beginning of your pre combat main phase, add green green. Okay, seems interesting. And then, oh, we actually have. Oh, I thought it was a creature, but it's actually a rare from the Jurassic Park set. So we got Don't Move for three white white. So destroy all tapped creatures until your next turn. Whenever a creature becomes tapped, destroy it. That seems nice. <laughs> this is really nice. And then the last card we have, we, we didn't get any mythics in, in these three packs. Wow. Very interesting. So we got Abuelo's Awakening for X3 white. Remove target artifact or non-aura enchantment from your graveyard to the battlefield with X additional plus one plus one counters on it. It's a plus one plus one spirit creature with flying in addition to its other types. Okay, so we can return. It, it, like, it doesn't even have to be a creature. It, like, it, it becomes a creature with X counters on it. Okay, seems, seems interesting. And then we have a treasure token to end it out. That's on the other side of the dinosaur token. All right, we, we are done with the collector's boosters for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Interesting stuff. Um, it's kind of sad we didn't get any mythics in the last three packs, but it is what it is. Like, it is RNG. I, I, I usually say this with these videos, so. Like, I don't expect to get the super best cards in every pack. I'm, I'm just here for the experience, and yeah, we got some cool cards. Like I said, I really like the art that they provided, the full art lands, even though it can be a little bit confusing in terms of color versus what they actually are. Like, the swamp looks like an island, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, kind of wish we got more uh, Jurassic Park stuff that isn't land, but maybe we have, and I just remember it wrong. And the rares seem pretty cool. And the tokens are always great, as usual, with these collector's boosters with the double-sided uh, foil. So, yeah, pretty interesting set. I don't know when I'm going to open the set boosters, <laughs> considering, I, like I said, I have that to open, and then the previous set boosters, which I haven't opened up yet, and then I still have some more Pokemon stuff to open, as well as non-Magic the Gathering or Pokemon stuff. So, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Um... Yeah, it is what it is. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, thank you for watching and have a nice day.